Hi and welcome to chandu.org. It is Halloween time and I thought uh, we could have some fun with a little bit of Halloween themed Excel. So here is an Excel chart that that is really a cobweb or a spider web. Uh, the fun part of this is you can actually add it to any of your Excel reports uh, just to do a little bit of Halloween decoration on, on your works, uh, you know something silly and fun so let me just first uh, showcase what this does and then i'll go through the process of constructing the same uh, for those of you who are keen to know the geometry and the charting maths behind this so the first thing is this is basically a a live dynamic cobweb what this means is anything you do in your workbook uh, uh, the cobweb gets redrawn with some new random things. I'm going to just press F9 um, or, you know, just recalculate. And you can see that every time we recalculate, this this thing gets regenerated with the uh, different coordinates and whatnot. So how do you use it? Well, very simple. You, you copy this, this thing, uh, select the chart and press Ctrl C to copy. And then paste it as an image on your Excel workbook. It could be a TPS report. It could be a, an, an awesome dashboard. It could be a, a timesheet or whatever you have. Uh, here is uh, it inserted on one of the recent workbooks that we published on our website. So that's actually a cobweb image. I just pasted it here. But if you want to get a little bit creative, you can actually go to picture tools and crop it. Uh, and then you know crop it somewhere like that so you only have a partial cobweb and then now you move it all the way to the corner so it looks like you know there is a cobweb around one corner of workbook and uh, you can play around with the colors uh, I've used some gray color lines but you can use any different color lines and add an image of spider on top of it or or something else like a fly or whatever that gets trapped into the cobweb so that you know it looks a little more realistic so there you go uh, a a halloween decoration for your workbooks now let's go back to excel and uh, go back to the other workbook and see how this thing is actually constructed okay uh, so here is our workbook uh, let's uh, recalculate this once just so you know, it's really fun um, and uh, see this now the tricky part is, although it seems like, uh, you know, spider webs are everywhere, you look look out of your window and you, you would, if there is a garden or yard around your house or, or office, you would see that, you know, there are lots of spider webs. So it seems like they are everywhere and they are really, there's nothing magical about them, but they are really marvelous pieces of engineering. You know, there's a lot of geometry and um, and structural uh, mechanics around the construction of spider web. So what I have done in Excel is nowhere near the realistic spider webs that a spider can construct. What we are trying to do is, you know, a simplified mathematical model of the spider web here. Uh, and uh, initially, I thought, you know, we could use the the radar chart. You know, it does look like a spider web. So I thought, you know maybe we can use a radar chart to create this but then i quickly realized that the radar chart wouldn't do any justice to the way a spider web look like because what radar chart does is it will give you uh, concentric polygons it could be four sided five sided six sided or seven or whatever number of spokes you have uh, but they will be concentric what this means is you the spider would have to somehow uh, weave one circle, one 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 polygon, and then jump to the next level and do it. That's not how a spider does. It is smarter and it 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 con conserves a lot of energy when it is weaving the web. So what it does is it starts at the center. It 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 does in a spiraling fashion. So this looks like a a set of polygons, but in reality these are all just one big line drawn from inside out you know in, in in spiraling fashion okay so that's the first part 
uh, and obviously there is a lot of mathematics around it uh, spider does think about the surroundings because these these spokes are essentially the main structure that it weaves right so it has to see what are the various nearest object it could be tree branches walls and windows or whatever so it has to see what is available and then first set these up and then weave the net around it uh, unfortunately in excel we don't have any such anchors uh, so i just assumed that you know we have free space on all directions and uh, the spider can weave its web so that's uh, another uh, limitation of our model compared to realistic spider web now mm, now comes the mathematical part of constructing i'll just explain very briefly the the way we have to draw this on paper uh, and then uh, we will go and see how that is done in in excel okay let's just say this is a piece of paper and we want to draw a spider web on it okay uh, for the sake of simplicity let's assume uh, there will be seven spokes of course there could be any number of spokes depending on the availability of space and whatnot but let's just say we have seven spokes and uh, and we want to go with that so we we start at an origin and we dra draw some random number of spokes so one two three four five six okay let's stop at six okay let's go with seven okay and then what we do is we we identify seven spokes so because these spokes will not be uniformly spaced what we first have to do is randomly space them out uh, but we have to also make sure that they total up to 360 degrees because that's the total angle in a in a circle right so what we what we want to do is we want to get uh, seven random or degrees which all total up to 360 degrees okay so that's the first part of puzzle now i'm saying seven but uh, when you redraw the cobweb you may want to use eight spokes or six spokes or 12 spokes depending on uh, on on how many you, you want in your model right so uh, we identify the number of spokes to be drawn and then we want to divide 360 degree into that many random parts we also want to make sure these are although not uniformly spaced they are not too small and too close that means if you we can't have one spoke like this and the next spoke all the way like that you know that that kind of creates a lop lopsided uh, spider web okay so that's the first part and then what we want to do is we start at zero you know, the origin let's call this as zero zero and then we want to go along one of the spokes it could be anything uh, uh, a random distance it, you know uh, um, so we we start at zero zero and then we go along one spoke by a random distance uh, we plot the first point and then we will go along plot the second point here third point there fourth fifth sixth seventh now once seven is done we can't go back here because remember this is not a polygon so we want to uh, go up to another level okay so like that and again this distance will be another random distance and we continue weaving our web like that right so this is how a spider web is done now although in the excel spider web that we have drawn we are just using straight lines so these are all just straight lines in reality because spider uses a an extremely smooth but very strong silky thread uh, there will also be some droop that means it won't be a straight line like this it will have some sort of droop depending on uh, on the elasticity and uh, and wind and and other factors that are there so it won't be like that it will probably have some amount of droop like that okay now unfortunately mimicking this kind of a droop in excel is uh, really tricky and uh, you know probably not worth the extra effort that it takes to do this uh, and honestly speaking it's friday morning and i don't really want to go into the uh, mathematics behind that right uh, this will require uh, constructing some sort of equations either parabolas or some other types of curves and and modeling them into the chart which uh, i find it too tedious but you're welcome to you know play around with this and and come up with something on your own 
So this is the logic here. Uh, there are a couple of things that are random. The number of spokes itself is random. Uh, then the angle between spokes is also random, the, but the total should be 360 degrees. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And the distance between the concentric weaves, consecutive weaves is also random. Okay, but we don't want to have too much gap or too little gap. So we will limit this to a narrow range and within that we randomize that. Uh, and then uh, the size of the web itself is also random. What this means is in one round of generation, we might use, uh, you know, we might generate a web that is this big, but in the next round of generation, we might want to go a few more rounds, a few more uh, spokes along, okay? So the length of the web, essentially, the thread length is also random. So that makes the spider web kind of look pretty uh, nice, and every time you press F9, you get different webs. So now let's go ahead and see the calculation engine behind that. I'll just uh, clean up this thing. And uh, so that's what we have here. Now, before we jump into the calculations, let's just quickly uh, demo this a couple of times. Uh, I'll keep the formula bar on. And uh, so you can see how the size and the density of the map changes. Density is changing because it's all plotted into the same plot area. So the more number of lines are there, the closer they look. But, uh, uh, you know, here is a smaller one. Here is slightly bigger. And then I have really no idea what it generates every time I press because that's how it works. Okay. So now let, now that we, we see the the spider web, let's go ahead and, and look at the calculations. So here are all the calculations. What I have done is, first step I have done is identify... Um, the number of spokes we want to generate and this will be a random number between 7 and 11 i picked these two out of just blue but you can change this uh, to you know any meaningful number all the calculations are connected to this uh, the only problem is below we are generate we are assuming that the maximum number of spokes will be 11 so you can uh, if you if you want to do it for 15 spokes or 17 spokes or whatever you fancy you need to extend these calculations as well. Um, but 11 is really sufficient and most spider webs are uh, usually less than that. Okay, the range gap range is essentially the gap between uh, two successive weaves and that, that would be a random number between 3.5 to 4.7. Again, you can play with these numbers. Usually that won't have any impact unless you use something very small and very big here. The length is how long the spider web should be. And again, this would be a random number between 150 and 600. There are 600 because I have done only 600 calculations here. So I'll pick out of all the 600 calculations, a random number of calculations to plot into the chart. And offset is a random offset between zero to 30 degrees. This I'm using because the first spoke would by default always start at zero degrees. So it will be a vertical line. And every time you redraw you, your spider web, although it has random degrees separating each spoke, it does look similar. So I thought, you know, uh, we can also offset the first spoke by a random number of degrees between 0 to 30. So that, you know, it will add a little bit of rotational effect between successive runs of the spider web simulation. Anyhow, the next step is we, we assume there are 11 spokes. So we, we generate a random number between... 300 and 500 um, really no reason why I chose 300 and 500 it could be any random number it doesn't matter and then we also make a decision whether to include the spoke or not this is basically a check to see uh, how many spokes we wanted and whether the current spoke is less than that number or not since we have 11 spokes and we also said we want 11 spokes this is all numbers are shown but if you if you recalculate you know, there might be scenarios where we wanted seven spokes. So the bottom four will be NAs. That means not applicable, right? We then calculate a, a distribution of percentages. What this does is it, it takes this number and it divides by the total sum of random numbers up to the top seven. That's because we only wanted seven numbers. Look at this formula and you will understand what it is doing. So this will tell me that this is the percentage distribution of each angle, right? 
Uh, if you add up the first seven numbers, you will get 100. That's because we choose seven spokes. If you run it again and uh, you know you have 11 spokes, then you need to select all the 11 to see the summing up to 100. Why we are doing this? Because we wanted the angle to be divided. Uh, for that reason, we are calculating the percentage. We then calculate the percentage uh, the angle in radians. Why radians? Because all the other calculations, sine, theta, and cos theta, everything is done in radians. So we we might as well do this calculation in radians directly uh, instead of angle. So here is your uh, radian calculation, which is basically that percentage multiplied by two pi, which is equal to three sixty degrees, and uh, we get that. And if you add up all of these, you will get six point two eight, which is equal to two pi radians okay uh, we also calculate cumulative that's because um, this is what we will be using in the calculations there uh, the cumulative will stop not at 6.28 but it goes all the way up to some other number that's because we are offsetting by a random uh, 0 to 30 degrees right so that's what that is uh, I'll come back to these spoke calculations a little later but now let's go ahead here so we are assuming there will be maximum length of the spider web would be 600. Uh, the very first point will be origin, which is 0, 0. Uh, so that's that. Uh, in, in a column, I maintain numbers 1 through 600, you know, all the way up to there, right? And then uh, we, we calculate through a simple mod formula uh, what spoke this number should belong to. So we have 11 spokes here randomly requested by the formula. Uh, let's go with 9 so we can see some variety. So we have 9 spokes to be generated. So what, what this will do is it will rotate the numbers 1 through 9 uh, in, 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 the, in the throughout the range 1 to 600. Okay. We'll also calculate the turn which is nothing but this number divided by 9. Uh, and round it up okay so these two will help us do the calculations we then um, calculate the r r is nothing but the gap between uh, spider webs okay for each turn the gap would be a random number sometimes it could be 3.5 sometimes it could be 4.1 whatever right within within that range so we 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 randomly generate that there are some if formulas there to to kind of work through the limitations that uh, you know we want the random number only for the first spoke after that we will just need a copy of that we don't want new random number there uh, and uh, next time we we reach the very first spoke we will regenerate the random number and add it to the prior value so that the 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 spiraling behavior continues so once we have r and theta, okay, uh, these values, we simply convert the polar coordinates r theta, r comma theta values into Cartesian um, coordinates, the two-dimensional ones x and y, using uh, r star sine theta and r star cos theta um, logic. So we have all the x and y values generated for all the 600 values. Now, although there are 600 values, the chart is only plotting a random number of values, right? It is currently plotting 412. So how is that happens? That happening? Very simple. We created two dynamic names. One is called as X values. The other is called Y values, which is basically a range that starts from F4 for X values, right? That cell and goes all the way up to one of the cells that corresponds to the length. So it goes up to the 412th value in that list. Okay, same for Y, but this one will start in column G. It's a dynamic name that we are creating here for X values and Y values. Uh, you can go ahead and examine this. Uh, the workbook link is available in the description. Uh, I'm just assuming you are familiar with those techniques. And if you're not, uh, I highly encourage that uh, you go through the resources beneath the uh, this this particular article page uh, to get that so we have both x and y values and we just feed that that uh, range uh, into the the source x values and y values of the scatter plot that we are generating here so it doesn't refer to a fixed range it refers to the dynamic name x values and y values 
uh, which will which will vary from turn to turn every time you press f9 you will get a new set of values there okay so that is the web part we generated the web it, it will look like concentric circle uh, concentric polygons but it is essentially one big spiraling web what about the spokes the lines that should be drawn from center all the way like that right now this is where the fun is what we have now done is all the spokes will origin from zero zero so that part is a give given what we have done is we want the spoke to go out all the way up to the maximum value but why stop at maximum if you observe spider web what it does is these spokes extend all the way up to a tree branch or a wall or something like that right so these are usually longer than the web itself uh, uh, these are like columns in a building essentially so we want them to be slightly longer and i am just adding the calculating the maximum the the corresponding r value for the 412th value because that's the length that we are going for in this this particular uh, spider web and then i'm adding a random number to it i just chose 20, 20 but you can also use some other number that you want to go with okay so that will give you some extra thread at the end and then we calculate the corresponding x and y values using your r cos theta r sin theta logic that that we have used here as well okay now technically you can generate all the spokes from this set of data itself you would what this means is you will end up creating 11 extra series into your chart uh, each with the x and x value as this and that and y value as this and that but i find that to be a little too much so i thought uh, you know why add 11 extra series if i could just add one series so what i have done is i have taken that data and i have repositioned the data transformed it into one big set of x and y values so it's essentially one one giant set of lines that go from zero to spoke one come back to zero go to spoke two come back to zero spoke three come back to zero like that i believe this is probably how a spider also weaves its web but i may be wrong okay so once that is done we just add the nick this set of lines uh, to the chart as spokes which is basically that and that the last values will be n is if we don't pick those spokes uh, so that they'll be ignored okay so yeah that's about it once we have done that we we just remove all the external junk from the chart like your grid lines your axis and your titles and plot area backgrounds and whatnot and you end up with just raw spider web so that's how the spider web is generated i hope it's not too confusing um, and i really hope it is entertaining and uh, you you like this idea even if you're not going to insert this into your reports and spoil them you know it, it is just a little bit of fun and uh, uh, i got to learn how to dr draw this uh, by reading a little bit online about spider web construction logic and all that so there you go and one challenge that i have for you is can you add a little bit of mathematical logic to it to bring in slight droop into this um i couldn't think of any way i mean one option that i was trying to do is um you know uh, with with your xy chart you have an option to do a smoothed line but what that would do is it will make it into a circle right it, it it's now trying to connect everything into one giant equation and this is not a spider web it's a spiral <laughs> so what we wanted was not a smoothed line but something that will kind of add a bit of droop on one edge or other um, i believe it is possible but it might take a lot of time for me to figure it out so if you are up for a little bit of challenge you know go ahead and see if there is a way to add some uh, something like that to this uh, but if it is too much calculations i say you know stop worrying and go celebrate your halloween or diwali or whatever you're doing this weekend <laughs> so there you go i hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you like it give me a thumbs up and uh, i also want to quickly tell you that i now have a patreon page uh, i'll put up a link to that in the in the description 
if you if you like chandra.org and if you enjoy our, our my my youtube videos or podcast uh, you know just give me uh, support my my work through patreon by pledging something uh, through the patreon page thank you so much and uh, enjoy your weekend bye bye